Now, words cannot describe the trauma a woman goes through after losing a breast or both her breasts due to a mastectomy because of breast cancer. Thankfully, with today's medical techniques, regaining what was lost is possible. One of the leaders in the field of breast reconstruction is Swiss-based Professor Dr. Philip Blondiel, who has dedicated much of his career to both breast reconstruction as well as corrective surgery. A short plane trip from Dubai will see you in the heart of Switzerland, and a short drive from Geneva will see you at the picturesque town of Montreux. Nestled between mountains and Lake Geneva, it is here where La Clinique is located. Skilled, well-trained and internationally recognised specialists offer beauty treatments through to cosmetic surgery procedures, all tailored to a patient's needs. Professor Dr. Philip Blondiel is one of the senior plastic surgeons at La Clinique, which was established in 2002. And his relationship with the clinic started soon after its formation. I've been involved with uh, Michel Fugue, uh, who's the owner and um, um, in initiator of this, this project. And uh, we actually worked together um, even before the clinic started. And, um, we, uh, we came to see this place and we found it a unique location and a, and a, and a beautiful place and uh, we felt that it would be very well suited actually for the type of clientele that we were looking for. It, it, it has a unique location but also the way it was built and the historical aspects of this building. It's, it's an old gynecology clinic uh, that was totally redone from the inside out and um, it, it, we're actually wanting to provide a holistic approach on care for patients and mainly obviously the aesthetic part of um, you know patients concerns both women and men and this can go from very non-invasive techniques like laser or um, um, ultra um, peelings, um, injections, you know, those kind of things, to, you know, big surgery, invasive surgery, where we can provide um, um, more complicated, more complex procedures for more complex problems. And I think by offering the whole range from non-invasive small things to, let's say, the more complex surgery, you know, we can provide any service that is needed for our patients. For many women who are facing the possibility of having breast reconstruction or corrective surgery, and with those recovering from the procedure, it is not just physical, but also a highly emotional experience. We need to understand what actually breast means for a woman. Um, and I'll compare it to a hand. The breast is actually a very funny organ. It has virtually no function during life. Only after birth, obviously, for lactation. That's the only function that it has. But from a psychological, emotional point of view, it's extremely important. It is probably the most important part of a, of a female body. Um, if you compare it to a hand, for example, you know, a hand is very functional. It has 99% of it is, is functioning. It's a very small psychological uh, part to it or, or aesthetic part to it. The breast, like I said, is, is very, very important, very special to a woman. So, um, obviously, in the beginning of my career, you, you started with more simple uh, surgery, but as your career moves on, we, we or I went into a direction where we focused on breast reconstruction. And it's the same thing there. We, we want to have the holistic approach. We want to be able to offer our patients that are confronted with breast cancer with the full scala of techniques that we can offer. And I think if we have one advantage at this clinic is that we can do so. So what are the things that make someone more prone to suffer from breast cancer? What are some of the characteristics and traits of this disease that individuals need to be aware of? And how can we detect the disease early? The origin of breast cancer is not known. We know that there are multiple factors that play a role. Um, but you cannot say, listen, if I'm going to have a strict good diet, I will never have breast cancer. Or if I keep my weight under control, you know, I have never had breast cancer. That's not the way it goes. There are multiple factors that play a role. The only thing that we really know where the risk is really elevated um, are um, actually genetic mutations. If you're diagnosed with um, genetic mutations, and we now know about five or six genes where, that are really play an important role in, in, the, in the development of breast cancer. If you're diagnosed with one of those genes, then you know up front that you're, you're going to have an elevated risk of developing breast cancer. I have shifted 
um, a little bit away from breast cancer and more to patients confronted with genetic mutations. Uh, these people come and see you, these are often young people, um, they know that they have this uh, genetic mutation and um, they want to have something done prophylactically. So they don't, have, they don't have breast cancer now, but you know, they're thinking about getting their breast gland removed and then doing immediate reconstruction. I think people just need to be aware that this is a problem, that this is an important problem. Uh, it's the number one reason um, for that for women between 45 and 55. So it's very frequent and um, uh, it, it, the self-examination just helps a lot, uh, but also just go and see your physician once in a while. Welcome back. As we have seen, Professor Dr. Philip Blondiel is a pioneer in breast reconstruction surgery. According to him, while the skill of a surgeon is crucial, a successful outcome for many women demands a holistic approach, as we find out. Deep flap is actually the first um, flap um, that was developed in a total new range of tissue transplantations that are now more commonly used. I'm talking about uh, 20 years ago when we developed this, uh, where the TRAM flap was the standard. What is a TRAM flap? TRAM stands for transverse rectus abdominis myocutaneous flap, which means that they will take a part of the, of the patterns of the abdomen uh, together with the underlying rectus abdominis muscle or the six pack muscle. You know, it's better known like that. Now, this muscle uh, is very important for stability of the trunk uh, and your abdomen. And what we saw is that when we, when we took out a part or the entire rectus muscle, that many of those women would be confronted with um, instability, loss of power, um, uh, incompetence of the abdominal wall, um, translated in hernias, bulging and so on. We felt there was a need to develop a new technique where the muscle would stay in place. And that is actually the deep flap. We take the same amount of skin and fat from the abdomen between the umbilicus and the pubic area. Um, but we, but we leave the muscle in place. So we only take the blood vessels. You cannot transplant tissue without vascularization. You need one blood vessel, the artery, to take the blood to the tissues and the other one to take it back to the heart. We leave the muscle in place. It remains functional. So all these problems that we saw with the tram flap are actually now avoided. And in every woman that's a little bit different. Most commonly it's, it's the abdomen. But you can take the love handles, um, the gluteal area, uh, the uh, the medial side of the thigh, the back side of the thigh, uh, sometimes the back. Um, it all depends where there's a little bit more fat and where also a woman wants to have the scar. For example, in South America, um, taking a tissue from the buttock is totally excluded. Okay, so it's, it's very culturally determined what the preferences are. A former patient of Dr. Blondiel, 45-year-old accountant Natalie de la Glicia, was first diagnosed with breast cancer at 39 years of age. Between undergoing chemotherapy and radiotherapy, she had a mastectomy. I was uh, diagnosed uh, for a breast cancer. I was uh, 39 years old. So they recommend to me first to do um, the chemotherapy, mm -hmm. and then uh, to go through the surgery. So I have decided because first they wanted to take me only the tumor out. Mm -hmm. And I have decided to, to get mastectomy because it was too big. Uh, after, before the mastectomy, sorry, uh, I had, uh, I referred to the internet because nobody was uh, telling me what to do exactly. So I refer to the internet and when I tap uh, reconstruction, I got to the name of the Professor Blondil. Mm -hmm. So I took my phone, I called him, get appointment and came to see him. So he explained to me if I do the mastectomy, first I had to go all through my treatments. So that means uh, the radi radiotherapy and then we can go for reconstruction. So that's what I did. According to Natalie, she faced many challenges when looking for the right surgeon to perform her reconstructive surgery. For her, there is no substitute for being educated through research when looking to find the right surgeon. So 
when I got my mastectomy first, I was very happy. It was like taking out uh, everything bad from me. So it was, um, I was very, very, I was fine with this decision that I did. Then I thought that uh, reconstruction uh, was going to be like six months after, but I had to wait for one year. After one year, I think the day that I got the reconstruction, I was like hysteric in the, in the clinic because I was so happy that uh, to recover everything that I got before uh, and that I didn't have anymore, I was very, very happy. Then the recovery was very, very good for me as well. Uh, maybe up after one month and a half, two months, I was already doing most of the things that I was doing before. I think Professor Blondil just uh, gave me uh, like, like a new life, a new opportunity and a new, uh, yeah, it, uh, he, he just uh, makes me feel like I was before. Once again, I'm, I'm using this word holistic a lot, but it is true. You have to look at your patient entirely. You don't want to create a beautiful breast and create a disaster somewhere else. You want to have the, the tummy taken care of. You know, you want to do a tummy tuck. You, make it, you want to make the, get the scar in the right position, make the abdomen you know, nice, get the right proportions, the nice, a nice silhouette, uh, both at the level of the breast, but also where you're taking the tissues away. For Dr. Blondiel, the healing process for breast cancer recovery involves the physical, emotional and intellectual reconstruction of a patient. And with that in mind, he formed the beautiful After Breast Cancer Foundation. He explains to us the backstory behind what motivated him to form BABC and the type of work and treatments the organization offers for those who have been diagnosed with cancer. We started the foundation about five years ago. We we're very young, we we're very ambitious. We have a you know, big group of people, we're active in several countries um, and, and we're, we're trying to get involved um, both um, uh, physicians, take caretakers, but also patients. Our board is actually made of, out of half of our patients and half of our physicians. And the reason why is because um, patients obviously have their own point of view on, on what they're going through, caretakers too. But the way we're unique is that we put both together and then it becomes the real story, it becomes a true story. And Natalie is one of those former patients who is using her past experiences to now help others. When you have a mastectomy, you, you are losing part of you. I think the breast is one of the, of the feminine, uh, you know, uh, part of your body. So uh, I think when you lose that, uh, you lose part of your uh, woman being. So I think everybody needs to, to get this back when you, you, you lose it, when you have a cancer. So we are fighting to tell all these women that you can, you can be the same as you are before, uh, even if you had a, a cancer. It's very cliche to say the, the light at the end of the tunnel, but it is true. Um, there is always light at the end of the tunnel. What you need to do is you need to give hope to your patients at the time of diagnosis. And that was not done. At the time of diagnosis, it would just give you the facts. It would tell you you need this and this treatment, and that's it. What we want to do with our foundation is to tell people, listen, all right, you're going to have to go over this mountain, but you know what? After the mountain, you know, there's another life. There's a life that even might be better than the one before, because most, we see that most of our patients actually realize you know, how beautiful life can be. And, and there's also an end to life too. And people really start to appreciate more what, what's going on. And the only thing that we want to be with our foundation is that light at the end of the tunnel. We, we just want to offer people a number of um, uh, insights and views on their treatment, but also on what they can do afterwards. We will support them on the level of, um, uh, of psychological issues, you know, uh, depressions, uh, difficult times, um, sexuality, you know, um, you know, how to deal with in a, in a relationship and partners, you know, your partner, how to deal with that. We look at the partners too, you know, we support the partners. Um, so all of this is actually this, this, this whole look at, you know, the quality of life. Actually, our motto is from, from hope to joy, which means that 
at the point of diagnosis and treatment, we want to provide hope to our patients. We want to tell them, listen, you know, all right, we'll go through this together, but after, after this, there's still hope. You know, there's still a meaning in life. And, and the joy is actually that when you're at, once you're at that point, once you're through your, your treatments, you know, there's still joy in life. You, know, you can really enjoy life, maybe even better than before. That brings us to the end of our program. If you'd like to know more about any of the stories you have seen tonight, you can contact us at UAE Weekly at city7tv.com or by calling us on 04367 2230. From myself and the entire team, have a great week ahead.